I wish that mask mandates were not a thing anymore. Mandates slowly becoming a thing of the past. We have breaking news this evening. Masks now optional on some airlines and the TSA will not be enforcing a mask policy in airports. Thank you for being here for Crimson News at 6. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Handrahan. This all comes after a federal judge in Tampa ruled today. The mandate was unlawful because she said it exceeded the statutory authority of the CDC and because its implementation violated administrative law. As of tonight, we know that masks are optional on Alaska, American, Southwest United and Delta flights. So if you are flying on an airline that is not on this list, you're just going to want to make sure that you call ahead if you're still not sure if you're going to have to wear a mask or of course just bring one with you in case it is needed. In the meantime, the ruling has caused a lot of confusion at airports as TSA and flight crews are trying to figure out what this new ruling actually means. So Janelle Finch is at the Spokane Airport right this minute. Janelle, what has been the reaction that you've heard from passengers? there. Mark and Whitney, it's been reactions across the board. This policy took effect just over two hours now here at the Spokane Airport. People are already taking advantage of it. I spoke to several flyers and got the reactions to the news. When I was at the Alaska kiosk, um, the attendant said master optional in the airport and on the plane. And I looked at him and I said, you know what, I think I'm going to take this off right now then. I have honestly believed that they should have done that a lot sooner. I'm jealous. I don't want to wear a mask either. Passengers say they heard the announcement on social media, the news, and from airport desk attendants. Currently, the policy applies to Alaska and Horizon Air passengers and staff. The CDC's recommendation for mask mandates on public transportation was originally set to expire today before being pushed to May. While some passengers say they'll still most, most likely choose not to wear a face covering, they say they will still keep a mask on hand. I also asked passengers if this mask change uh, will affect which airline they choose to fly with. One passenger told me that it won't have an effect on which airline she chooses because wearing a mask has been the standard for some time now. Live in Spokane, Janelle Finch, Creme 2 News. Janelle, thank you very much. Meantime, the White House reacting today to today's ruling, saying they are disappointed with the ruling. And here's what Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to say this morning shortly after the ruling. There may be people sitting in an airport bar watching right now wondering <laughs> if they're boarding a flight tonight, is the mask mandate still in place? We're continuing to recommend people wear masks. I don't have any update. This just came out through the courts just this afternoon. And as soon as there is an update, uh, we will provide that. To is all the of White you. House anticipating an announcement by Homeland Security tonight? I, they are assessing it right now. And as soon as they have an assessment and an, an update on additional steps, they'll they'll make that available. By the way, just last week, the CDC extended the mask mandate through May 3rd, so this ruling ends the mandate a couple of weeks early, so to speak. No word yet if the administration plans to appeal the ruling. The latest from CBS News is that the TSA will not enforce mask wearing in airports as the administration determines its next steps. And in the meantime, we are still waiting to hear updates from other forms of transportation that were under that mandate, including Amtrak, Greyhound and Uber. Now, Krem2 did reach out to Spokane Transit Authority. A spokesperson said at this time, STA will continue to require masks until there is updated guidance from the TSA or FTA. There is no official new direction yet from federal authorities. Today, there are more canceled flights at SeaTac Airport. Now, pilots with Delta getting ready to hit the picket lines. Angela Kakade with our sister station in Seattle has more now about the frustration that some travelers are already feeling this week. Passengers say they're really feeling that impact here. You've got the flight cancellations. You've got busier than normal airports. And yeah, tomorrow we are expecting that the Delta pilots will also be picketing over some of those same scheduling issues. Now all this comes as people head back from spring break and as we head into summer, so the busy summer travel season. According to CNBC, people spent $8.8 .8 billion on domestic flights last month and bookings were up 12%. Staffing at airlines is down though, Alaska Airlines now in its fourth week of pilot shortages. And passengers say the demand is driving up prices and anxiety ahead of summer. It was pretty pricey. Um, it was about maybe 1110 which is weird because <laughs> I'm used to seeing it like at least $500. Now, Delta Airlines has said that the expected pilot picket happening tomorrow here at SeaTac will not impact their operations. 
For now, reporting at SeaTech Airport, Angelique Hackaday, King 5 News. Well, back here at home, the woman accused of throwing rocks at windows at Lewis and Clark High School appeared in court this afternoon. That suspect now charged with felony malicious mischief for the severity of the damage. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley shares now how witnesses helped police identify the suspect. Last Thursday evening, two witnesses reported seeing a woman throwing rocks at the glass windows here at Lewis and Clark High School. One of those witnesses told Spokane police they were driving by the school here on the way to the ER and saw a woman throwing rocks at the glass windows and another witness. In fact, the school resource officer told police that he also saw a woman intentionally throwing rocks at the windows that night. He shared with police security footage that captured that incident. Now, according to Spokane County court documents, Brittany Johnson is known to Spokane police and they have contacted her several times downtown. They say she frequents the STA Plaza downtown and local shelters. Court documents say school security cameras captured a woman matching Johnson's identity throwing rocks. Now, the school resource officer estimates the damage to those doors to be at about $750. Police found Johnson in the area and arrested her that same night. Now, according to the Washington Department of Corrections, Johnson previously served a year in prison for residential burglary. Spokane police also say Johnson had three outstanding warrants at the time of her most recent arrest. Now, in court today, the judge was going to release Johnson with pretrial monitoring, but she continued to speak out of turn in court today, so the judge ended up setting her bail at $250. Reporting from the Lewis and Clark High School, Amanda Rowley, Prem 2 News. Well, today, an Okanagan County man charged with first-degree murder after allegedly killing his girlfriend appeared in court. Sheriff's deputies arrested 70-year-old Roy Rasmussen after police found his girlfriend shot dead inside a home in Oroville. Now, police say 46-year-old Siri Zosel was dead for two days before they found her. Rasmussen's bail has been set at $1.5 million. Friends of the victim say they tried to make contact by going to her house. That's when they say they observed the suspect acting defensively. According to one witness, he reportedly saw the victim lying on the floor inside the home. During an interview with detectives, uh, police say he did confess to the shooting. New information about the fire at Ballard Golf Cars and Power Sports in Hayden, Idaho. According to Northern Lakes Deputy Fire Marshal, the fire began in the battery charger location at the back of the buildings. They suspect the fire was started by lithium batteries that were charging. A private investigation will now be done by the insurance company to determine if there was an issue with the battery that may justify a recall. Today, four Eastern Washington fire districts got some new tools to help them ahead of the upcoming fire season. Washington's DNR gifted the districts with new uh, wildfire engines from the state surplus. It's all part of the state's efforts to strengthen rural districts in fire prone areas. Fire chiefs from Spokane's Fire District 2, Stevens Fire Districts 5 and 10, and Ponderay District 5 all presented with those engines today. The Spokane Fire Chief Brian Schaefer also said that without donations like this from the state, rural districts simply would not be able to afford the resources they need to battle wildfires in eastern Washington. The cost of doing business in our country right now has placed fire chiefs in making critical decisions on whether to buy fuel or to buy first aid supplies. Those daily decisions are challenging. And lastly, when there are programs like this, it is truly a blessing for those agencies because they wouldn't have the resources to uh, acquire apparatus like this with their existing budgets. A total of 10 engines are being donated statewide. DNR is hoping to double that number by next season. Idaho State hydrologists are optimistic about the recent late winter weather, but they say the state needs a lot more of it. As of Thursday, Idaho is in a nine inch deficit for its precipitation this calendar year. This unusually wet week in April resulted in about 1.5 to 3 inches. But keep in mind, the nine inch deficit included the April precipitation. So in order to make that up, Idaho would need about another month of these precipitation levels. We've got quite a bit of precip here. Um, Excellent, but it's certainly not enough to pull the state out of drought. Right now, nearly 70% of the state is in severe drought. The committee predicts 2022 has one of the lowest water supply years on record, going all the way back to 1981.
Well, Washington needs the rain as well. So let's turn things over now to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legoo as we talk about whether or not we're actually going to see any of that rain this week. Oh, we've got some in the forecast okay. and it all starts tonight. Right now, temperatures on the mild side. We're still at 57 degrees, which is pretty average for this time of year, about where we should be on this, the 18th of April. So things starting out pretty good. 52 in Coeur d'Alene, 48 there in Sandpoint, and 55 in Moses Lake. We are looking at some pretty decent conditions out there, but things are going to change. That's thanks to a low pressure center sitting off the coast and a cold front associated with it. Already seeing a bit of activity moving through the Cascades. Some of that prefrontal activity moving out into central Washington. Do we get this at 645? Maybe could see a little bit of prefrontal shower activity here for us. It'll be light in nature. The bulk of our activity arrives after dark tonight. And then as we get into early tomorrow morning, it moves out of eastern Washington, but it's heavy snow up in the mountains that then works its way out. And tomorrow we have the chance of a few isolated thunderstorms as temps go from the upper 30s to the mid 50s by Tuesday afternoon. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Looking ahead now, President Joe Biden is visiting Washington on Friday for Earth Day. The White House says the president will be in Seattle to discuss infrastructure and clean energy. The president will also stop in Portland. This will be President Biden's first visit to the Northwest since taking office. Well, tax day is officially here, but you might be one of those who needs a little more time to get your tax returns done. So what you need to know about filing for an extension coming up. Plus, there's an upcoming election in Spokane. Your ballot drop-off location, though, may have changed what you need to know before Election Day.